Welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Founded in 1938, Bible Tracks seeks to take the gospel to all the world. Our teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. For more information about Bible Tracks, go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. And now our teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the program today. Thank you so much for joining us here, the Friday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. I have my Bible open right now. It's open to the book of Ephesians and chapter 4. Ephesians 4, we are walking our way through the book of Ephesians. And if you are a relatively new listener, let me right now encourage you, if possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Ephesians, please, chapter 4. I'll begin reading at verse 7 here in just a moment. Uh, get something to write on and something to write with for a couple of reasons. We try to give an outline every time we come in our study time, and our outline builds from one day to the next. I'll be using some words beginning with the letter M today. I think you jotting down the outline will help you be uh, more effective in remembering what is said there and then go back and refresh later on and even glean more from the text. But with that pen and paper ready, you'll be able to jot down our contact information because I want you to get some gospel tracts from us. Now listen, friend, a gospel tract is a great evangelism tool. A gospel tract is a short written presentation explaining to the reader how to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. We have a sample packet containing more than 40 gospel tracts in it. I want to give it to you absolutely free of charge, but I can't do that unless you first give us your name and your mailing address. My announcer at the conclusion of the program will give you our contact information. You take one of those methods, give us your name and address, and we will send that sample packet to you almost inevitably in the very next day's mail. One of the gospel tracts in that is this one here entitled Born Again. Born again. Now, there's a term a lot of people have heard, even people that don't go to church. They may have seen it at a football game where somebody held up the sign from John 3, 16, and, or you must be born again or something, but they are clueless what it means, or some people are very confused what it means. The word born again means to have a heavenly birth. This gospel track was written for our 75th anniversary. We are not right now in year. 79, but this track was written to clearly lay out what the Bible means by being born again or the new birth. Oh, friend, we've got to be clear about this. A whole lot of people have come to Christ with this gospel tool, this gospel track, born again. Please, please have pen and paper ready when my announcer gives our contact information. If you have your Bible open there in a minute, I'm going to begin to read at uh, verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 4. But let me start with this name, Bill Cosby. <laughs> now, that Bill Cosby name once was held quite high. Now it's, well, kind of in the gutter, I know. But uh, let me just use the fact of uh, one day I was reading a story by him about his mother. Now, when he was a young boy, she was a single mom with the kids living in Detroit, and they were very much poor. They were living in poverty. And as a result, she never had any appliances in her home. She got accustomed to doing things the old-fashioned way, the hard way. But when her children became adults, got jobs, and so on, they began to buy their mother some appliances. They wanted to make her life easier. Well, in the article by Bill Cosby about his mom years ago, he said that they went home one day and on top of the refrigerator at his mom's house was three brand new toasters sitting still in the boxes stacked up on the refrigerator. No matter what the kids said to her about trying to use them, she told them no that she wanted to do things the old-fashioned way. She had all these gifts, but just didn't use them. 
I tell you that story because in our passage here uh, from Ephesians 4, God is giving gifts to his church saints, and each one of his saints receives the perfect gift that God has for them so that they can be involved in the process of developing mature saints out of baby saints. Get your Bible and join us. Have pen and paper handy. I begin now. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 says this, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, he that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's where we're going to stop right there. Now, I have titled verses 7 through 13 this way, Our Commander. Our Commander. Jesus is seen in these verses as our commander, the leader of the church. He is seen supplying the church with gifted people all that it needs to build up the church. And verse 13 ends with these words, the fullness of Christ. Now, that statement simply means that when the church saints function in their gifts for the glory of God, Christ, Christ then is the one that gets lifted up, magnified, gets seen by the world. I'm using some words beginning with the letter M to walk through verses 7 to 13. So far in verse 7, we've talked about our measuring commander, our measuring commander. In verse 8, we talked about our majestic commander. He is enthroned in glory, our majestic commander commander. Now today, I want to focus in on verses 9 and 10. You will notice that those two verses are a parenthetical statement. They're in brackets there. That simply indicates to us that the information here is not placed there to help us make the key point. It's not going to move the key point along. What these brackets simply give us is details about Christ that God wants us to know. I want to show you here uh, what I mean by this. I'm going to begin to read at verse 8. I'm going to skip verses 9 and 10, the parts that are in the bracket. Then I'm going to then read verse 10. I'm going to go from 8 to 10. Notice how the flow of the text just goes right on. Verse 8 says this, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. You see, if we left verses 9 and 10 out, the key thought and the flow of the passage would continue. But God put 9 and 10 in there. My two M words for 9 and 10 are these. In verse 9, we have a ministering commander. Ministering commander. In verse 10, we have a magnified commander. Let me show you. Verse 9 says that Jesus ascended back to heaven. But then it says that he had first come down from heaven. Now, obviously, what they're referring to there is the whole story of Christ's birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection, his earthly ministry. Now, I labeled verse 9 ministering commander because Jesus came down from glory. The eternal Son of God came down from glory, took on flesh, and dwelt among us, not to be served by sinners, but to serve sinners, to give his life a ransom for many. He came to be God's perfect Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He came to be our ministering commander. But look at verse 9. There's a phrase there that confuses people. Verse 9 has a phrase that says, he, Christ, descended into the lower parts of the earth the lower parts of the earth. Now, some preachers have used this uh, phrase here to say that Jesus went to hell. Now, they say Jesus went to hell. That is not true whatsoever. 
They say that Jesus went to hell and suffered there on our behalf. Oh, beloved friend, Jesus never went to hell. That phrase, lower parts of the earth, are simply used to be in contrast to the fact that he, the, the passage says, ascended up on high. Now remember, remember, sinners who reject Christ go to hell. Jesus never rejected truth. He fulfilled truth. Jesus bore our sin debt uh, on the cross when he went there and died on Calvary. But he, Jesus, while he bore our sins, was never a sinner. He took our sins. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Think of it this way. Let's say that a 25-year-old young man loses his job. He lives by himself, but because he loses his job, the bank says, you got to make your car payments, but he can't make the car payments, so he calls his dad. He says, can you help me? The dad and the boy go to the bank, and when the dad walks in there, the dad is carrying the, uh, the booklet, the for the payments of that boy's car. Now, I ask you, is the dad in debt to the bank? No, the son is. But that day, the dad carries the book in, the payment book, and he puts down the money and pays off the car. That day, the dad, who never was in debt, paid the debt. He never was in any trouble with the bank. The boy was. Friend, you and I as sinners are in trouble with the God of heaven. We have broken his laws. We are in debt to sin. We can't pay the debt. Jesus came and he walks into the bank, so to speak, of heaven and takes our sin payment book with him. And there he pays our sin debt for us. But he was never in debt to sin. Jesus carried our bank book. Now, listen, Jesus never went to hell. He did descend to earth to minister for us. Now, verse 10 says that Jesus has ascended far above all heavens. Why? The verse says that he might fill all things. Jesus, the creator God, ascended to his proper place to receive eternal glory. His glory is going to be seen in and through the entire universe. Above all, he's going to fill all. He's going to receive the glory as king of kings and lord of lords. But also, also from his ascended position, his exalted place at the right hand of the Father, Jesus can and now fill the universe with blessing. Now, friend, let me just put things very simply. Jesus does that, don't you know? He said in the Sermon on the Mount, you are either on the broad way that leads to death or on the narrow way that leads to eternal life. He had, gives us just two options. When we die, we either go to heaven or to hell. We only have two options. My friend, either you and I are a blessing of God to others or we're a person needing the blessing of God. I'm not talking about a priest or pastor, somebody putting any kind of oil on you, putting his hand upon you and being a pronouncing some blessing. I'm talking about the blessing of you having your sins forgiven, the blessing of having your debt, sin debt paid, and the gift of forgiveness and everlasting life be given to you by the God of heaven, the creator God, who came out of love for you, took on flesh, dwelt among us, died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and rose again to say, see, I can give you everlasting life. Friend, that's the greatest blessing. And without it, you have no blessings of any eternal consequence. Thank you for watching Bible Track Echoes a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our Bible Tracks, please write us at P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702, or call us at 309-828-6888. You can also visit our website at BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.